Dallas County District Attorney John Cruzeau, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. And so I know you can't really talk specifically about the accused Love Field shooter, but this case represents uh, the major problem that the state of Texas has in dealing with criminal defendants who have mental health issues. Is that right? Absolutely. Yes. Perfect example of, of what the crisis is causing in this state. Uh, this young lady has been in and out of jails in various counties for various offenses, and it appears from what I've read in the, in the newspaper and seen on television that she's had uh, mental health, severe mental health problems all along. She's, from what I've read, never been competent to stand trial, and uh, we've struggled with it, this county and others. And the bottom line is, because there's a long wait for hospital beds for people like her, she's never really received any services. And it's something that I warned the commissioners about that folks like her um, are getting out of jail with absolutely no services having been delivered to her, no meaningful services having been delivered. And so she goes out mentally ill and it's more likely she's gonna what? Come back into jail. And it just depends on the offense. And unfortunately she wound up at Love Field with a gun and who knows where she got that from. That's disturbing in and of itself. Unfortunately, no one was hurt. And so um, just going from what you said about last month, you went before the Dallas County Commissioner's Court and you had requested additional money to expand your mental health division. Talk to me a little bit about that and what that impact would have on this problem. Well, so we have a limited number of attorneys that have been budgeted for that section. We have investigators and and we have uh, care providers also that have been donated to this office, kind of like case managers, and that those tremendous help. However, there's so many cases in the system uh, that we can deal with that the number of cases per lawyer is way over what it should be. And so the amount of time that we can invest in getting things done right, making the correct decisions, getting them in the right places with the right services is compromised. And with the number of these cases expanding, we have presented to the commissioner's court a need to add at least, I think it was three lawyers and maybe an investigator and what have you, so we can get a better handle on this. And what we hope to deliver is a better outcome for the individual, which of course will benefit public safety and especially our tax dollars if they're not hung up in the jail and waiting to go to a state hospital. And I was checking with the uh, Texas Health and Human Services Commission, and this morning they told me as of Tuesday of this week, uh, there was a 2,486 person wait list statewide of people judged incompetent to stand trial who are waiting to receive treatment in a state mental health facility so that they can uh, make them uh, try to get the treatment so that they can become competent to stand trial and yes. help them. Um, and so what, what, what's your thought about that and, and how big of a problem is it here in Dallas County? Well, so I think there's some, some issues here that, um, are beyond what we think of, um, other states that deal with this more effectively have done things like expand Medicaid that we're unwilling to do. And that makes dollars available, makes medicines available. Uh, one thing that, uh, we need to do is look at the number of state uh, beds for the mentally ill and expand that. Of course, the better thing to do is to treat them in the community where they don't wind up in jail and needing to go to that. But since we're in this crisis, it will take uh, more than a notion to build one of these hospitals. And especially for the criminally, uh, the criminal defendants that go in as opposed to civil defendants, uh, civil people. So um, you can't do it right away, but it needs to be addressed. I think that the state should put more money into mental health starting at a young age on up because many of these people like this young lady, she's been mentally ill for a long, long time. And the state has not had the resources or the schools or the criminal justice uh, departments that she's come in contact the resources. So we really need to rethink this and I think provide more resources for practitioners like myself, district attorneys, judges, and defense attorneys to be more effective in getting these people out of the system and keeping them up. Um, I asked HHSC what the state is doing about this to try to relieve this backlog and this wait list. And they told me they've started a number of initiatives um, 
to try to, to help relieve this starting last September. I was talking with Collin County, one thing that they've used, which has been effective for them, is they try to get medication orders for these folks so that they don't have to sure. uh, wait to get into a state facility. They can, you know, get uh, deemed competent to stand trial and get the help they need with the medication orders. Is that something Dallas County has done? Yes. And in fact, this young lady actually was on an outpatient basis, unfortunately, and probably because of her mental illness, she did not complete the program. Um, so we do some of it in jail. Um, some of it takes permission, some of it takes an order. Um, I think that Collin County is obviously operating within the law and trying to do what they can to manage this portion of their jail population, and so are we. We just have more people than they do. And um, how, how many do you have um, that are um, fit this category that you're aware of? I think my number, that the last number I saw was less than 400. That's still a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, when you consider where they are in the jail, they're in the mostly in the hospital portion of the bit of the jail, which is the most expensive uh, place in the jail. So you're talking, you know, close to $100 or maybe more a day uh, for that. That's a Parkland great hospital. And the sheriff does a great job of, of administering that and she's dealing with it as best she can, but it's still almost 400 people. So it's a lot. And we were talking before about some of the things that uh, your office is doing to try to keep these folks out of the system, period, yes. um, before there's an issue. So talk to me a little bit about you. You have the Dallas County Deflection Center. So talk to me a little bit about that. So Dallas County Deflection Center is an initiative from this office. It's a multi-million dollar project. It's in Oak Cliff. It was a, a, a partially used building. It's been renovated and it's a Parkland grade facility staffed by Parkland employees, nurses, doctors, what have you. And for those who are homeless, mentally ill in a crisis who have a low level offense, most likely a criminal trespass offense, uh, they have an option of being taken there instead of going to jail where services are provided. There'll be a case manager there'll be services all the way to the point of assisting and putting a roof over their head, a permanent roof over their head. So what we're trying to do once again is keep these people from coming to jail, but on the other hand, provide services so we can make their lives better, make the community safer, and of course, save tax dollars. That's, that's the goal of that project. And your office has spent uh, a total of $450,000 uh, to expand uh, well, it's 250 to expand right care for Dallas PD and yes. then also help uh, the cities of Addison, Farmers Branch, Coppell, and Carrollton with a needs assessment on what they need to do, 200,000 for them. Yes. Uh, and and what how how will this help keep people out of the system? Well, so let's take the 200,000 for the four cities. This is for an assessment to help them understand where they are and what they need to do to get in front of the problem of mental health and homelessness and those types of crisis issues in the community. So it's getting in front of it. They share a jail and eventually somebody would come down to the Dallas County Jail. So to the extent that we can solve that before they go to jail, any jail, that's a win for the community. As far as right care is concerned, uh, that is an initiative that is expanding within the city of Dallas, Dallas Police Department but they're expanding the areas of the city and the hours that it operates. So um, all of this money that we're contributing to this comes from asset forfeiture, from criminal asset forfeiture. Um, this is the money that comes from the drug dealers and, and those types of people, the cartels and what have you. So it is traditionally sat here in this office and not been spent on anything uh, useful in that sense. So what I've done is tried to repurpose and rethink this and invest this money into the municipalities and to the police departments so that they can do a better job uh, with this population and we can get help for the population and they don't wind up in jail. One of the other compelling facts that uh, for this is that a mentally ill person who comes into contact with a police officer who has to draw a gun is 16 times more likely to be killed. Um, we have these cases here. They're no different from any other city. There are many mentally ill people who um, want a confrontation with the police because they want to die. They want to commit suicide. 
How do we know that? We know that from their words, their actions, and information that we get from their family. Oftentimes they've said something to the effect, I'm leaving and I'm not coming back. And they have a gun with them. Of course, what we would want the family to do is to try to call the police or mental health experts. Uh, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But all of this money is, is, is to get in front of this problem and to solve other problems of encounters, deaths, uh, the cost to the community, people waiting in jail, the, the backlog to the state hospital. So it's kind of a coordinated strategy to deal with a lot of things with very targeted money. And I guess just my last question, uh, and again, um, is going forward in, in the Adufawa case, is there anything that the public should understand about, you know, she's still going to need to be deemed competent to stand trial depending on yes. charges, et cetera? Well, from what we know, she's had an in and out, and every time she goes in, she's incompetent to stand trial. So we assume that that will be the situation that we're faced with, though we don't know yet, but there will be an expert evaluation done on that. We'll get that. If she is incompetent to stand trial, then we start right back over, except this time with a felony that involves violence. Uh, she'll have to wait for those types of beds, the, the high-risk beds, um, at the state hospitals, a little bit longer, a little more involved. But even if she if she gains competency, then the obvious issue I'm sure her attorney would uh, want to look at is was she sane or insane, legally insane at the time of the offense. If so, uh, that means that she could not be held criminally responsible. Now she may be able to stay in the mental health system, depending on the facts, but she may not be held criminally responsible for her actions there at Love Field. It just depends on how this plays out. But the one difference, because this is a first degree felony, the, the one difference is that even if she were to be deemed incompetent to stand trial, she will not be released while waiting for that bed. Is that correct? Should not be released, yes. <laughs> I don't have control over releases, uh, but I would think that she would be held um, by a court until there's a bed available and she gets the treatment. And of course, we want the treatment to be successful. Dallas County District Attorney John Cruzeau, thank you so much for joining us. We really do appreciate your insight into all this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your interest. We appreciate it.